If you joined us for the last presentation, um, that full webinar is now on YouTube on the Mamaki USA uh, channel. So that is available. We will do this one the same way. Uh, give us a couple of days and we will have this all up on the YouTube channel there as well. You are welcome to, as I said, to ask any questions in chat. Our email addresses are up there as well. If you want to email any of us questions, you're certainly welcome to. This presentation, Jaime is going to um, start off fairly basic and go through some, some basics of uh, uh, coloring models. And then as he progresses through, um, he'll shift more into the uh, Blender and ZBrush and, and certainly uh, Adobe Substance. Um, we're really excited to work with Adobe this year and uh, we're going to start off now by showing you some of the things that we've worked on with them. So nice to see you all again. Thank you so much for joining. So I just want to start off real quickly because I don't, I don't want Jaime to have all the, all the cool stuff. Uh, and I want to show you a few things that we've done with Substance, uh, Adobe Substance this year. Um, this is one of the first things that we, that we worked on with them. Kind of put it right in front of my in front of my face here so this is a shoe that was designed with adobe substance um, what's really great about this is uh, the ability to get and i'm not sure how well this is going to show up there we go but to be able to see the kind of detail and the texturing that's able to happen uh, using the adobe substance software and then out to the momaki 3d uj 553 full color printer uh, you can see the detail in this. Um, if I wasn't telling you that this was a 3D print, I think it would be unlikely that that you would know. It's it's really phenomenal. And uh, I think these two products are really just uh, made for each other, really uh, complement each other in an amazing way. Right. So some of the other things that we've been working on is we did work with uh, with. Um, the substance team on their meat mat contest for the meat mat one contest and we had samples that we showed at the last adobe max uh show that was in los angeles last year and we were really excited to sponsor that con that contest this year um, and as part of that sponsorship we are providing uh prints of the models to the uh to the contest winners um, so what i'm going to show you is the ones from the student categories and then uh, as Jaime goes through, he's gonna show you the ones from the, uh, the open or the general category, which is more of the professional uh, uh, ones. Um, and that's part of what he'll be showing you today in his presentation. So there we go. This was the, uh, the third place uh, winner for the student contest. Uh, really nice model. Again, all done with Substance Painter. And Jaime's gonna show you how now they've got uh, some amazing tools uh, to be able to work with the displacement maps to be able to get the uh, the texturing down, which you'll be able to see uh, in some of these, like the second place winner, uh, the texturing on these is just crazy. I'm um, trying to get it close enough that you can you can see the detail and also be able to uh, uh, keep it in focus. There we go. Um, so the displacement maps and all, and unfortunately, Simon will tell you. The, the new displacement tool came out about uh, just a few days or a week, I think, after he finished doing everything by hand. So he's uh, very skilled and can do it both ways. And we'll talk a little bit about both. But being able to add in the uh, uh, bake the uh, displacement maps right into the mesh is, is a big, big plus. And again, uh, using this with the Mamaki printer is, is uh, just a, a match made in heaven. And then this is the first place one for the... Uh, uh, for the general category, this is a, a beast. I think this is something like uh, 10 inches tall. I think that's right, eight or 10 inches tall. But it is just uh, turn it this way. Oops, going the wrong way. Just massive. It's uh, it's got a ton of detail to it. Um, again, you can see uh, the texture that's in these, and they all came with bases as well. So this is the kind of stuff that uh, that we're able to do uh, using. Uh, Adobe Substance, Blender, ZBrush, bring it all together, and it just becomes a fantastic full-color workflow for, for 3D printing. Um, one other one that I'll just show you very quickly, this is another one that, that came to us. This is a file from the uh, Adobe team. Uh, I'm not sure specifically who, uh, who did this one. This was not part of the Meet Matt contest, but again, just the level of detail that you're able to get with these models is just phenomenal right. so there we go so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn 
the presentation over to Jaime, and then uh, Fred and I will work through the uh, the chat list, and we'll make notes for questions. And as as we get a chance, we will uh, turn that over to we'll get those questions to Jaime. So Jaime, I'm going to make you a presenter now. All right. Okay. So um, again, uh, thanks for uh, joining us today. Um, I'm going to go uh, real quick on 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 how to how to start with a you know with a very basic mesh and then uh, try to turn it into a really uh, nice uh, beautiful piece of art. Uh, we're gonna take as a base uh, one of the uh, basic uh, models uh, that are available on Substance uh, Painter. So uh, it's the it's the same base model for the uh, mid matte contest. Uh, so I'm gonna switch over to uh, the Blender application and let's start from there. Okay, so I hope everyone can see uh, the Blender um, screen right now. So this model has uh, three components. So I have the head here, I have the body, and I have a base. So um, in the um, the body, the body uh, it's printed in one piece, uh, head and body, and the base uh, will be separate on all the models. I wanted to have uh, the artist to, to be able to take out the model of the base, you know, from time to time. And it also uh, uh, will help to, to reduce the printing time and it will reduce uh, the amount of material, uh, especially, especially with, the, with the support uh, material. All right, so this is the base model. There is no color on it. Uh, so what do we need to get to get to to uh, our final printed piece? So uh, let me go back to. Okay, so we have the uh, second screen here. So basically, we need a uh, water type mesh, a uh, texture map for color information and displacement, and a uh, color 3D printer, which is going to be the Mimac 3UJ 5x3. So uh, the water type mesh. Uh, a water type mesh is basically uh, a 3D mesh that, in theory, uh, you should be able to pour water inside of it, and the water will not escape. Uh, it's very important to to have water type meshes in 3D printing uh, because if you have any kind of errors or bad edges or phases, so uh, the printer once it reaches the, the the point of the geometry where there is an error, so it will basically freak out, or you will you will have an error. Uh, on FDM printers, uh, for example, it is start uh, pouring filament all over the place. Uh, in our printer, it will, it will uh, basically uh, create poles out of it, or you're going to have uh, the entire piece printed, but it will collapse uh, as soon as you throw it into the tank because you have to dissolve the support material. So the checklist is, is very simple. Uh, no inverted faces, also no bad edges, uh, no planar holes. And uh, these two are uh, optional, which is uh, checking interceptions and reducing shells. Um, with the, print, the printer actually uh, uh, does not care if uh, two, um, <coughs> uh, two shells are intersecting. Uh, it will not add extra material. So you can be a little lazy when it comes to to the uh, finishing of, of the file. And the last step will be uh, to optimize the file size. So um, I'm gonna show you hey, real quick. Sorry, we, uh, had, we had the question, uh, does the mesh quality matter in this workflow? Um, it really depends. Um, it really depends on, on, the, on the part that you're going to print. Uh, yeah, I will say uh, more triangles means you know more more surface definition, but that's not always the case. Most of the times, you really want to have just enough uh, to to get that uh, to get that uh, figure. So, for example, if you're printing a cylinder or or some sort of a cubical uh, shape, you don't really need uh, that much quality to express that. But okay. I'll, I'm gonna try to explain that. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna jump into. Uh, the materialized magic uh, interface and gonna show you uh, a couple of uh, shells uh, examples. And uh, this is uh, the, the head part of the model. 
So like you can see, it's a very simple shell here. And I also have a non-manifold or a, a non-volatile uh, shell. So if I go into my um, fixed wizard, I'm gonna analyze this part. And it's gonna tell me that it has uh, inverted phases. So that means that the surface of, in this part, uh, the red part here, it's actually pointing out to the inside and not, and not to the outside. So if the light was, uh, um, I mean, if the light basically, instead of bouncing, is gonna go inside of the model. So we have to correct the position of those, of those uh, phases. We also have a lot of bad edges. Uh, the most common problem, sometimes uh, designers will leave like a small tiny gap in the model here. So if it's uh, big enough, so, so the machine is gonna, is gonna have an error and basically your print is gonna be, it's gonna be done. <clears throat> and same happens to planar holes. So this is a big hole in here. So there is no uh, valid volume for this part. So this is not a valid solid. And again, if you, uh, if you toss it into any uh, 3D printing slider, so you're gonna end up with a bad print or your prints, uh, your prints will collapse. <clears throat> so there is a couple of, uh, there is a couple of uh, things that you can do. Um, I definitely do not recommend, when, when you have really complex models, I do recommend to, to, to fix those uh, using the original design software. Uh, you can fix the holes automatically, but the software is definitely going to do uh, whatever it wants. So for example, if I try to fill uh, this hole here, so it's gonna do like a, I mean, it's going to repair it, but at the same time, you can see that there are really sharp triangles here and the surface is not as smooth as compared to the other, uh, I mean, to the, to the rest of the mesh. So that could be a problem. Sometimes it could be a bridge. Uh, if you need to establish a bridge, you have to manually do it. Uh, because otherwise, if you trust in, into the auto fixing of the software, so you're going to end up with unexpected results. <clears throat> so after you've done all your repairs, so you can select your mesh here and you can analyze. So this is how it's, uh, it's supposed to look. Uh, so you should have no inverted normals, no bad edges, uh, no bad contours. And um, most of the times uh, it is recommended to have a, uh, only one shell. Even if it's a composition, try to get one shell. It's not, uh, with, without pointer, it's not entirely mandatory, but <clears throat> you, can, uh, you can surely um, get away with it um, sometimes. All right, so let's go to the next step now. And uh, same happens to the uh, color for printing. This is uh, basically the same, the same image. Okay, so uh, jumping uh, into the texture um, part of it. So let's go back into Blender real quick. So we're back into the uh, Blender interface. So uh, the texture map is uh, basically uh, a bitmap that is projected onto your mesh in order to add certain details. So it works uh, for color and uh, it also works um, to displace uh, the mesh and give uh, a little bit of uh, volume uh, relief, uh, also uh, concave, uh, uh, concave details to it. <clears throat> That's uh, basically uh, what is going to help you. Uh, let me move this screen. So if I, I'm gonna jump into uh, the uh, texture, uh, texture uh, mesh that I made here, uh, like small C scene. And in here, what I have is uh, the same head and I also have an image linked to it. So there is a bitmap here that I linked to the image and that's gonna be my base color. And, and it's gonna be uh, directly uh, link to the base color part of the material here. <clears throat> we 
we can also have a uh, different um there are um We can also uh, manipulate uh, certain parts of the mesh here. And for example, we can make this mesh look a little bit more metallic. Although I'm gonna turn down the roughness a little bit here. And yeah, I can make it look a little bit more metallic. Also, I can make it look a little bit more glossy by changing this specular. And we can manipulate um, any of these values. We can also uh, create uh, different textures to, uh, and we can link to each one of these. When it comes to 3D printing, we basically need uh, the base color and we can also use uh, uh, the normal maps and also uh, the, the, the displacement ma maps. All the other maps, uh, we cannot reproduce uh, metallic uh, surfaces. Uh, those fall uh, out of gamut and also the nature of the material is, is basically we have a plastic. So, it has a, a matte, uh, like a matte finish to it. So it basically absorbs light. So there is no way to, to, try, to try to reproduce those uh, metallic finishes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so let me go back here. Uh, Okay, we also have uh, normal, uh, some maps that can um, modify the, the actual surface of the mesh. So if I have a normal map, for example, I can, I'll link here into normal, and you can tell that there is a little bit of, there is a change on the surface. So you can, I can also manipulate how deep uh, the map will go. So all of this is, um, again, it's, for rendering purposes or for video game engines, uh, this is this is the main purpose of all of these. Uh, also, the the biggest reason to use a texture map is um, to improve the performance of the computer. So you can also add color directly into the, onto the mesh, but you will have to subdivide your model uh, several times in order to to get an accurate representation of color or doing uh, digital painting. So you have to do a lot of phases and that starts uh, taxing your hardware. <clears throat> so the UV map basically looks, I'm gonna switch to the UV um, editing just so we can see it. Let me go back into here. So this is uh, my mesh right now and this is my uh, this is my color map. So all these surfaces will be, all this color is projected onto the surfaces. So if I select uh, the, all the faces here, you can see my, uh, uh, the mesh. So it has been turned into a 2D uh, representation. So I can actually um, project color on top of it. <clears throat> So there are uh, different um, uh, different maps. Let me switch back just for a moment. <clears throat> okay, so we have the uh, these um, examples of the texture. We have the uh, the color, the base color. In this case, it's, this is uh, the one that goes the map that goes with the body of uh, the model that I, that I just um, showed to you. And I have the normal uh, map, which is the one that it was generating a little bit of displacement. Also, there is. Uh, Another uh, map called uh, displacement is also called a uh, height map or bump map. Uh, this one is a black and white image, and it will uh, it will give that that sensation of height uh, inside them on the surface of the model. <clears throat> uh, so uh, for texturing, I really want to make a, a mention uh, on, on working with Substance Painter. So, because it's one of the leading uh, software applications, um, you can create materials uh, and, um, and assets uh, really fast uh, with software. There is a huge uh, library that you can use. And also you can uh, work with uh, low poly or high poly, uh, the, the mesh export capabilities. This is something that I want to uh, uh, showcase. And, 
I'm gonna switch back into um, into Substance Painter. So now I'm gonna jump back into Substance Painter. So this is the the in, the interface uh, of Substance Painter. Uh, I will have my um, 3D model um, loaded here. Uh, this is uh, this is one that you can uh, actually open uh, from the library. Uh, so it's free uh, for everyone to use. And uh, basically, I can start um, do uh, regular painting. So I can uh, start with my diffuse map or color map. So I can just go and select and pick a color here. And um, I'm just gonna go with the body and start, you know, like regular painting, like like if it was uh, Photoshop. And you can see that the uh, red color is also getting projected on the side. This is my unwrap model, uh, you know, for the UV map. Uh, the, the flatter presentation of that model, so I can I can paint it. Which uh, for solid color it's, it's not such a big deal. Uh, I mean a lot of the uh, other software platforms can do this, but uh, where uh, definitely uh, Substance Substance Painter excels is uh, that you can uh, actually have um, apply a material real quick to one part of the mesh. So I'm going to select the head here, and what I'm going to do leave this one. I'm going to take one of the materials from the library and I can just drag and drop in here and really quick I mean just one click I have a wood texture and it has a wood appearance and everything. <clears throat> also I can start controlling uh, all the all the parts of, of the um, the map. So for example I can go into uh, the roughness here, and I can just change a little bit the, the lightning. And I also can change uh, the height, so I can make those groups of the uh, wood a little bit deeper. So just a few clicks. Uh, if you do this in a regular uh, three suffer, it's gonna take take you uh, a long time if you, if you're kind of new to this, so it allows it allows to to put quick materials onto the surface, and then you can actually uh, dedicate more time to do um, a smaller detail. So try to generate a bigger impact um, in your um, 3D compositions. <clears throat> so once here. So once I'm done here, uh, also I can uh, I can control the the displacement. This is a really uh, a fairly new um, tool in, in Substance Painter, and you can also check the scale of your displacement and play a little bit with it. Although this one looks a little bit wonky here, <laughs> but you can also uh, work with this. And the tessellation part, you can actually subdivide your model several times. Um, and this uh, this is going to play, um, uh, I guess, a, a, a bigger role when you export the model. So you can do, uh, you can start from a really basic subdivision count, or and then you can just, you know, pull from here, and you can actually add more detail, uh, more shadows, and and etc. to try to get a little bit. Uh, a little bit more uh, detail to the model. <clears throat> well, this is uh, well, this is a really basic, you know, way to show it. Uh, you can work uh, again with layers, just like in Photoshop. So this is basically Photoshop on steroids. Um, I'm going to show you what a, uh, an artist can can get, and this is one of the uh, winner entries for the uh, mid map uh, contest. And now. Uh, you can see there is a lot of really fine detail on the surface of the model. There is also a displacement. So you can see there is text. There. So the base, if I move into the base um, channel, so this is still the same, you know, kind of flat image that I can see uh, that I should just show you in Blender. And I also have all the other maps here. Uh, so this one has roughness. This one has the normal. So this one is uh, what is keeping all those groups. 
uh, inside of the <coughs> uh, on the surface of the model and also we have the height which is this one actually pulls um, outwards at uh, the surface of the, mo of the model and let's go back here so once I'm done with this I can actually uh, so for the 3D printer, we need to actually add all this detail uh, and bake it onto a real mesh because we still need the, all, the, all those triangles and all that information uh, for the mesh. So this is the old way <laughs> to do it. Uh, I'm gonna go back into Blender real quick. And in here, I'm gonna go into my displays model, which is this guy over here. It's gonna take a moment because it's a really uh, big file. There you go. And let's switch into the modeling part. There you go. So if I select this uh, this um, mesh over here, I apply a uh, displacement. Uh, that is a displacement tool that I, that I can use, and I can actually load up uh, the same height map. Uh, that I generated in uh, Substance Painter. If I look into on, on how the material, it's uh, I can just change you know how much uh, depth the material can have. Oh, just so I'm gonna go with uh, 10, 10 points here, and the displacement looks uh, you know a little bit less, and then I can uh, try to. Go ahead and keep control of this until I'm, you know, happy or, or close to what I'm seeing on on substance. <clears throat> so once I'm, I'm happy with it, I can actually apply this and then export the model. <clears throat> but uh, the, I think with the, the new, that is a new uh, tool in in substance that you can use, and uh, it actually will save you a lot of time. So. It just takes a couple of clicks. So you go back into the model here, and what I'm going to do is go into file. I'm going to export the mesh, and in here it's going to uh, give me the option to uh, do displacement and tessellation. So what it's going to do is going to uh, calculate all the displacement and project it onto the surface, and then you click export. <clears throat> So my recommendation when you're using that uh, tool, uh, definitely just keep the subdivision uh, probably not higher than 10, because otherwise you're gonna end, end up with a, a really dense mesh and your computer will, I mean, uh, some, uh, your computer might not be able to open it, open that, that export mesh. <clears throat> Um, another thing that I uh, do recommend also if you have uh, several parts, you know, like several shells, so try so try to um, make individual uh, files for them. So in that way you can uh, export uh, one shell at a time. And that also is going to reduce uh, the file size and makes everything easier. <clears throat> oh, nice. Let's go back here. So once I'm done with the uh, with the export, or, or once I'm happy with uh, the displacements here, so I'm gonna apply all these uh, modifiers. So each uh, software will have uh, like a similar like a similar uh, uh, modifier that you can use, and then I will proceed to uh, decimate uh, the mesh. Before going into that, oh well. So if I hide these um, shells, some this one shows that there is uh, about three million polys, and for 3D printing, this is just too much. This is just uh, an eight-inch figure, and two million polys is just too much. So I'm going to have to uh, decimate them all a little bit. Uh, in order to to reduce that and make the the system go smoother and the slides are uh, everything will run faster if I decimate and optimize everything. <clears throat> so I will apply another um, 
I will apply that destination and I'm gonna go back into. So this is another copy, which is already decimated. So like you can see, uh, there's not such a big change as compared to the one that I previously had. Uh, I still can see the details. Um, <clears throat> to me, the most important thing is uh, for the minimum surface detail, what I do is a little bit silly, but what I do is I just try to scale it and, and have it um, pretty close to, to the real life size on my screen. If I see, uh, if I can see the smaller detail, I'm gonna keep it. If I cannot see it very well uh, from this uh, distance, so um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna decimate and take it away because there is no, there's no way that I can see that in real life. Also, you have to keep in mind that the machine has uh, also uh, a physical limitation, so we can print at 22 microns, um, which is 0 0.02 millimeters. But also, you have to keep uh, in mind the X and Y uh, absolute accuracy. And that's uh, between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3. So that's basically my minimum uh, feature. I try to keep it at 0. Point, anything below 0 0.3 millimeters, I just, I just take it out because I don't really need it. <clears throat> and I'm going to switch back into, and I still have my colors in here. If I go. Uh, into the molding part, and I select this. So uh, it's uh, simplified. I don't, I don't have the normals or the uh, displacement maps because I don't need them anymore. I already put all that detail on the surface of the model. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm pretty much ready to to export the file. And uh, oh yeah, oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> And here is, uh, I have the comparison uh, with the sub substance uh, export as well. So it's right next to it. So this one was done with just a couple of clicks. I just have to, I just have to decimate the model. But it will, if, if, if I have had the, uh, the export tool from substance uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, it will have taken me probably half of the time to, to get the uh, get the files ready. Also, this file is pretty much closer to what I see in the render. <clears throat> so it's gonna be more accurate as well. So we can see uh, some of the displacement. This one is, uh, I, I exported this uh, with uh, um, a couple of subdivisions uh, left just for the purpose of, of keep uh, the system running um, smoothly. But you can add, you know, you can get, add a little bit more of detail. But at the end, they're, they're, they both uh, look pretty similar. I mean, can you show the final printed piece? Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. So then here we are. This is the final printed piece. Uh, you can say, and, and it's even better if you look uh, look at it, you know, in person, because you can actually go and and check all the uh, small details of the part. <clears throat> uh, again, uh, so we cannot we cannot do metal color, so we have to actually try to play a little bit uh, with the maps and try to get like a, some sort of closer representation. But um, unfortunately, yeah, the, that's I guess that's our limitation. And especially in the material, this is this is plastic, so it's not the same as com as compared to a uh, to uh, uh, polished metal, aluminum, or you know any kind of reflecting material. <clears throat> but still, you know the the color uh, the the color transitions are really good. Um, it's really smooth. <clears throat> Uh, we also have the winning entrance from uh, uh, William Bradley. This one, it's great. And again, this one, if you actually get really close to it, uh, there, there was so much detail um, on the mesh. The render is really impressive, and I, it was a little bit challenging to try to get all that, uh, all the all the stitches and seam of the clothing. But at the end, it came out uh, really nice. So this one is also another another mode to appreciate in person.
So before um, exporting the uh, the mesh, so again, the decimation it's it's really tied up on how big your file is going to be in real life. So uh, I mean, if it's bigger, so you definitely want to add more uh, more details to the surface. And if it's smaller, so you want to take out uh, a lot of the de details because the machine is not going to be able to reproduce them. So so yeah, you can take out a lot of details. And same happens with color. So if you have uh, some really dark areas that uh, with smooth gradients, uh, you might want to simplify that uh, if you have a really small mesh. So for example, if you're going to print this at, uh, at about, um, I'm gonna say like, like one inch uh, tall, which is uh, 2.5 centimeters, you might want to uh, take a lot of those details out because they're not gonna be reproduced by the machine. So you're gonna, you're gonna end up with a really big file for a really tiny print. So it's there to optimize that and, and make uh, things go go smoother. So um, scale is really important when you're when you uh, when you're designing. You have to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> I will say you, you can start at one size and then just uh, think about um, scaling that to 25% more or 25% less. That's that will be my recommendation uh, when it comes to um, to uh, define the scale of of a file. Um, another recommendation would be probably use uh, use a metric system. <laughs> it's I think it's easier to to work uh, uh, the scales with it, uh, especially if you're uh, working with um, interlocking parts uh, with uh, moving parts. Just, uh, just one second. Yeah, with interlocking parts let me go back into the camera. so if you have a piece like this uh, so this one has uh, moving parts and everything so uh, there are tolerances that you have to keep in mind so i will say yeah it's it's easier to calculate all of that in a uh, uh, metric system it uh, makes everything a little bit easier it's it's better to calculate over uh you know over tens that over i don't know 25th or 12th or 16th. It's, it's so I'm happy with the model. I'm just gonna um, export all of these, and I'm gonna switch back into uh, the Maki 3 link. <clears throat> and now I have uploaded uh, the model. Into my Ami Maki uh, 3 link uh, interface. And again, in here, well, I can just do like really basic operations like um, move the position, uh, rotate, or to scale a little bit uh, the model if I have to. So once you're done, you basically, uh, so once I'm happy, so what I'm going to do here is uh, try to reduce the, uh, the Z axis, uh, I mean the height. So that's that's gonna be uh, I guess the the only formula to try to to reduce uh, the printing time. Obviously, you also have want to reduce how much uh, support material you're using. Um, <clears throat> so there is no need to to worry too much on on support material because uh, the model will be uh, projected all the way to the bottom. So there is no I guess no workaround for that. This is just uh, by default. And then you can calculate the estimate and send the job to the printer. So we do have one question in the uh, in the chat saying, uh, wouldn't it make more sense to nest the base in this case underneath the legs to reduce the X Y footprint? And uh, yeah, check the position here and reduce a little bit of, of the time. So it's not such a big deal um, if you have it uh, going on into the X axis because uh, the printer will move. Um, basically in this direction. Um, not such a big deal. Most of the times it's, it's just the uh, X axis. Uh, the uh, Z axis, sorry. Uh, any considerations to file prep that you've not mentioned that will help designers with file prep? Good question. Uh, the first one and most important is definitely uh, set up the scale right, uh, especially if you're going to send your file to a uh, query print. The second one is on how your mesh uh, first, the mesh is very important. Uh, I think this is just like a basic of, of modeling. If you have your base mesh, so going into the base of the model. 
so yeah the topology it's uh really important uh you know the you have to uh try to define you have to try to define well your uh edges if you want to subdivide your model if you don't have any any loop cuts going around like this one for example so if you subdivide your model you're going to end up with uh, unexpected results so yeah it's that that is very important on on the model construction uh, the second one, uh, when it comes to resolution, you can start um, uh, for texturing. You can start at a higher resolution. You can start at our four, uh, our four K. Anything over four K is an overkill for most of the prints. Uh, so if you have a, a four K image uh, turned into inches, uh, you know, like a forty ninety six pixels by forty ninety six and seventy two uh, pixels of uh, resolution, that's going to be uh, like a hundred by 100 inches which is pretty big so yeah you can always uh i mean you can start at that and depending on the size of your model on, on how much uh how much color do you want to add or fine details so you can actually reduce or play a little bit with the resolution of, of the uh, of the texture map um another i guess another problem that i uh, find most of the times is uh, definitely um most of the models that I used to work with, uh, it's everything is optimized for um, screens and, and and rendering. So there is a lot of fixing to do on it, like making the back face of it. Uh, you know, sometimes it's gonna be just the front of the image. Uh, like for example, you you will have a yeah, like half of the model done and things like that. It will be like reflected or um and uh obviously when it comes to like mobile parts and, and assemblies so tolerances are really important uh so the only um i like to work with so for example if i have a, a, a pack or or a part that actually it's assembled i like to use uh, 0 0.25 millimeters of tolerance that's my magic number like the do it all number so if uh it's not really tight so if I want to type it, I actually don't clean too much the support material on, on the actual uh, uh, the intersection point. And if I want a little bit of a, like a snug fit, so what I do is I clean very, very well that part and, and I, put, I fit the part inside. That's, that's kind of like the best number to work with uh, if you want to have like a really tight. Uh, other than that, if you have um, all parts out, I will probably use 0 0.5, which is a, a also like a word free uh, like a word free uh, tolerance as well most of the times uh, this is these um, models are just prototypes so you just want to show uh, functionally but you don't really have to be that precise all right thanks Jaime so I put uh, I put all of our email addresses in the uh, in the chat window if anybody wants to copy those you're more than welcome to um, if you've got technical questions, uh, you can email any, any one of the three of us. If they're seriously technical, Jaime's going to certainly be the best, uh, the best option. If you have questions about uh, you know, the machine from a sales perspective, please contact Fred. Any general questions can go to me. Um, we've listed there our Instagram account as well. Um, we tend to post all of our, uh, our new uh, you know, projects and things are there. And then I'm also pasting in the uh, the link to the uh, the product page on the Mamaki USA website. So again, thank you all so much for uh, for attending. And Fred and uh, Jaime, thank you for being here as well. And uh, look for us again next month. We will uh, be looking to do a uh, just a general machine overview, a tour through the machine uh, that we'll do a, a virtual tour of. And um, again, thanks so much, and appreciate you coming out.